This tutorial series is going to cover AFNI's start to finish tutorial. So in this case we're going to start with downloading and installing AFNI and also downloading a sample data set and using AFNI to analyze that data set from start to finish. First thing, I have a few links here that I'm going to be using. You can find these links in the text box down below this video. So here we have this installing AFNI page and I'm assuming that you're using a Mac OS. If you're not, if you're using a Linux system, you would use the instructions from this link right here. But for now, let's focus on this basic 10.7, 10.8 install. This does not install Fink, so in that case we won't be able to use more advanced scripts. We're not going to focus on that for right now. If you want those later, you can install Fink later. But for now, we're going to focus on this install. And by the way, it also works with earlier versions, such as 10.6. So here, the first thing we're going to do is, and I'm just following mainly what the text is on the screen, just showing you what actually it looks like. So click on System Preferences, click on Accounts, and then type in your password, minus Farnham, and then right click on your name, Advanced Options. Okay, and login shell, make sure this is set to slash BIN slash TCSH. It gives you a bunch of different options, but make sure it's TCSH. That's because we'll be using something called a T shell, and it's much easier if we just have our terminal default to that shell. Just the syntax is all much more standard. Okay, so don't worry about any of the rest of this stuff in account setup. Don't worry about Xcode installation or Fink installation. Let's just move to AFNI installation. What you can do is you can use curl, it's a program if you have it installed, or you can simply download it from a link right here. Okay, again, I have this link posted in the text box down below. So in my case, I'm gonna download this Mac OS X Snow Leopard 10.6 Intel 64-bit no fink. Uh, just download whatever version you have, it doesn't matter if it says no fink or not. So I've already downloaded that. It downloads like anything else and puts it in your downloads folder. Okay. So everything else I'm going to be following from these, the rest of these steps down here. Now with a Mac, just click on the spotlight then type in terminal. This essentially acts as a Unix emulator, which is pretty cool. So if this is your first time uh, doing it. It should look something like this. Okay, so this is what's called our shell, and you'll see a bunch of other stuff like the name of your username, the name of your computer, stuff like that. Don't worry about that right now. Just notice that you can type in commands, and one of the most basic commands, if you recall from the Unix tutorial I sent out, is ls, which just lists what's in your directory. When you start up a terminal, you're in what's called the home directory. I'm just pressing Apple and the plus sign to make this a little bit bigger, to make it easier to view. All right, so notice that we have a bunch of different folders here, and in downloads we have our downloaded uh, AFNI data. So if I go in there, downloads, I type ls. An easy way to see what was downloaded most recently is ls-lrt, just lists everything in reverse. So you can see that the most recent things I downloaded were this Mac OS 10.6 package and also this AFNI Data 6 file. Uh, at this point, again, this is another link that's down below. We're also going to be working with AFNI underscore Data 6. So on this data link, just click on AFNI Data 6. It will download it and put it into your downloads directory. Okay. So CD, that's just change directory, that's the navigation tool. And dot dot means move up one directory. All right, so assuming that I'm starting in my home directory and I have these two files in my downloads directory, I can type MV, uh, downloads, and press tab to complete the name. And then Mac, I just type in Mac OS X, hit tab to complete that, all right and a dot to mean move it to the current directory, which is my home directory. If I type ls again, you'll see this Mac OS 10.6 Intel underscore 64 dot TAR. Now when you first download this Mac OS X package, 
usually what happens is it gets decompressed. So uh, sometimes it might have a .tgz extension, that means it's been zipped, but usually a Mac will automatically unzip it and you'll just see this tar extension. It means it's been compressed. I'm going to type the same command, move downloads, and this afni underscore data 6 dot tar. And again, this dot means move it to my present directory, which is my home directory. Okay, I'm just going to list the contents again to show you that both this afni underscore data 6 and the afni software package have been uh, successfully moved. Now to decompress these and to extract all the contents, similar to using WinZip or something like that. Type in tar, which stands for tape archive, and this dash XF option means extract files. And then I'll type in the name of that file, .tar. Okay, I've already done this. This is why I have this other directory called Mac OS X, just without the tar extension. I've done that for the AFNI underscore data six tar as well. Okay, so I'm just, it takes a couple minutes to do that. Just, I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. All right. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type, I'm actually going to start typing in some of these commands they have over here. Okay. So we've already downloaded this Mac OS X software package. We've extracted it using tar, and now we're just going to typed in this command, move, and the name of the file could be Mac 10.7, uh, 10.6, 10.8, depends on what you've downloaded, and then a space, then a bin. That stands for AFNI binaries. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So I'm just gonna resize this. My Lord, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna move that and a bin. So notice that this, this directory that we had before, it's now gone, it's just been renamed a bin, which is now right here. Okay, if we type ls a bin, these are actually all the individual programs that compose AFNI. Okay, so don't worry about looking through all of them, but just know that there are a bunch of different commands in here and they're all called upon by AFNI to do different things. And then you can uh, use this remove command to just uh, get rid of the downloaded file, just free up some memory. Okay, now update the path and the library path. We're TCSH users. Remember that first thing I had you do was to actually change your shell so it defaults to a T shell or TCSH. So I'm just copying this verbatim. Echo parenthesis set path. And just copy it word for word. It should be okay. So this is all going to a file called .cshrc, which is a startup file. So each time we start up our terminal, it's going to automatically read that path and know that the AFNI binaries are located in this APIN directory. So we do that. Type in this other command they have right here. This one right here. So we got a set env. Dot CSHRC. Okay. Very good. So remember, don't worry about this bash users or TCSH users. And the last two commands are source.cshrc and rehash. Okay, once you've done that, if you simply type in AFNI from the command line and hit enter, AFNI should start. Okay, fantastic. So it's not too exciting right now. You should just see something like this, a couple other windows. Uh, X out of that. And assuming you've already downloaded AFNI underscore data six, go into AFNI data six with the CD command ls to see what's in there. Uh, CD FT analysis and then cdft. I'm just kind of spidering down into all these subdirectories until you come to these files which have this dot brick and dot head extensions. 
So once you're in this folder with these .brig.head, these are AFNI fMRI data files. So type in AFNI, and then it'll automatically locate those and load those in the viewer. Once you've done that, you can be sure that AFNI is working appropriately, and then you're ready to move on to the next steps. That's it. I hope that's relatively straightforward. Just first of all, make sure through system preferences that TCSH is set as your default shell. Then download the AFNI package, the entire suite. It'll be in your downloads directory. And also download AFNI underscore data six. That's what we'll be using to use the start to finish tutorial.